Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and um, I wanted to show you this. This was interesting to me. And by the way, if you hear what sounds like a vacuum in the background, that's because there are people cleaning and there's a vacuum running in the background. This, this can happen from time to time. But let's, let's take a look at this. I thought this was an interesting uh, tweet. Worldwide Crypto Wealth Statistics. Millionaires, 172,000. Sent to millionaires, 325. Uh, billionaires, 28. Total crypto users, 560 million. Um, okay, total market, uh, let's see. So, and then they go to Bitcoin. Millionaires, 85,400. Sent to okay. Total crypto users, well, I think that these numbers are going to be like completely blown out of the water. I've told my wife for since since 2023. I told her I said I have this feeling 2024 2025 that's my year. Those are my years. Those two. Late 2024 into 2025. Those are the the years of crypto. That's what I've told her. Check it out. We've got a Brad Garlinghouse sighting. This guy apparently saw Brad Garlinghouse at a Coldplay concert. I love Coldplay. Um, and then we got this from Lark Davis. This is interesting too. Um, September, is his, this shows you historically the best performing Bitcoin months. So September is, is not a good month usually for Bitcoin. I think this year all bets are off because you've got Wall Street coming in. I think everything could be turned on its head, so I don't think this necessarily means September is going to be bad this time. But I just wanted to show you that historically, um, in the crypto markets, you know, everything's always kind of followed Bitcoin. Historically, the worst two months, uh, or the best two months out of the year, is October and February. So. October, uh, or could we have a September surprise and September end up being a good month? Okay, here's two of my sponsors, Miles F Franklin, uh, CEO Andy Shackman and Jason Cousins, C CEO of Glint. These guys started a joint uh, YouTube channel and they've got a, another video out today and so here's a clip the world is getting crazier by the day but it's nice to be able to chat with someone like you and try and make heads and tails of it gold is already hitting records highs with a strong dollar and with uh, high interest rates we can imagine what's going to happen when the fed does flip back to easing great uh, point we're spending a hundred thousand dollars every second for stupidity a trillion dollars every hundred days for stupidity so you just shift your focus from stupidity to gold and bang, you just buy whatever anyone wants to sell. And that is just to massively devalue the dollar. And you keep hearing both administrations talking about their goal would be to devalue the dollar and keep interest rates low. Just imagine what happens when people realize they can get a yield on gold as well as they can on their dollar. It's just gonna double down on the effect. Uh, of, the, of the gold price going up. What happens to the stock market and the economy and the cryptocurrency market when all of these whales sell? Bang! Gone! And the market is a foosh! Everybody can now hold gold as a reserve currency and uh, they can hold it in bar and coin format, the type of stuff that Andy's business sells. Uh, you can even use it as money in the way that Glint, uh, Glint Pay allows you to do. There you go. Check this out. This was put out by ITM Trading. Also, some uh, gold updates. Uh, hey, Daniela, I want to get into gold, but I'm almost they're almost afraid here at these levels because they're like, what's going to happen? Could we go higher? Is there going to be a pullback? I mean, how do you see things? That's a great question. And the answer to that is there are always surges in the middle of a bull market. 
and there are always corrections after those surges. In fact, in the last bull market, Daniela, I documented all of those, and there were uh, something like 18 surges of over 21% in that last gold bull market from 2001 to 2011, and there were 20 corrections of 6% or greater. So it's, vi it's the very uh, proverbial two steps forward, one step back for the gold market, just like a lot of assets. But the point for now is we're in a gold bull market, and therefore you wanna buy on dips and you may wanna take profits on certain companies if there's a big run up or a surge, but this is very common. So a 6% correction would not be abnormal at all. Of course, we don't know when that's gonna you know, take place, but that's the average of what we've uh, seen in the past at least. Okay, what do we have next? Trump to announce plan to make U.S. crypto capital of the planet. Sounds good to me. This is the uh, Twitter feed for what his sons have been teasing. They, they call it World Liberty, WLFI. It's supposed to be some kind of DeFi platform or something like that. Then our old buddy Joseph Lubin is all of a sudden back doing interviews. And so um, this morning he weighs in on Trump and Comrade Kamala. It's, it's the judicial system in the U.S. and the United States um, that has been helping our industry uh, because uh, the government, the executive branch, has been trying to kill or co-opt our industry. Um, the legislative branch um, has been doing what it does best, uh, which is do nothing. Um, and You're unfortunately, joking. the courts have, have been... Uh, really quite helpful. Uh, so they're pretty neutral and clear thinking and uh, they've helped our ecosystem. Um, the um, presidential uh, elections and other elections uh, in November uh, have been heating up and uh, uh, crypto is a very important technology and those people are starting to understand that uh, crypto is a very powerful lobby right now, a very powerful group of people. And so um, uh, a few different uh, court cases um, had impact um, on, on even the mainstream media. Um, and that got the notice of Donald Trump, who opportunistically uh, and probably aligned with, the, with his philosophy um, has jumped in and indicated, uh, especially in the speech earlier today, uh, that he, he wants to uh, prioritize crypto um, as uh, as an important foundational technology for, for the U.S. to, to get behind. And uh, and he promised, for what it's worth, to uh, to get rid of the um, the frictions that uh, the government and, and probably. Probably big banks have been working hard to, to put them out of this. Um, uh, the Democratic Party, Kamala Harris, um, is also working with, uh, with knowledgeable people in our ecosystem. So we expect both sides to come out with uh, some very positive statements and support uh, for our ecosystem. <laughs> I love how he's so uh, concerned with regulation and all this stuff now. Back in 2018, after he got his Hinman speech, he acted like, well, we don't need anything. We've worked with him. It's great. <laughs> he did things like that for years. This uh, Uptown Saul, he says the BIS warns against Bitcoin and Ethereum without naming them. Certain risks stem from blockchain's reliance on unknown third parties, which makes it difficult for banks to con conduct due diligence and oversight. These risks require new risk management strategies and safeguards, current practices of mitigating these risks remain in various stages of development, da da da. Um, so anyway, you get the point. I said biggest red flags in the history of finance, ETH disguised whales that Congress, SEC, CFTC won't even acknowledge. Bitcoin, hidden creators that the government has met with but lies to the world and pretends to not know who the creator is. Only Ripple has been completely transparent in their holdings and they've been attacked for it, go figure. Ashley Prosper is directly over the target today. For some, it's impossible to imagine a world where Bitcoin and ETH are not at the top, but that time is coming. I agree with that. 
I also agree with this. Charles Hoskinson, Charles Gasparino, Raul Paul, Mike Novogratz, Jim Cramer. Are these the kind of people we should be listening to about XRP? I'll answer that. No, it's not. We have a strong community and despite our differences, we unite when it matters. Conspiracy theorists, cult members, we've been called it all. Yet we stay strong because we know something they'd prefer we didn't. The financial world is changing and cryptos like XRP will play a major role. Ask yourself this, why do they even care? And, and are, are, they con, are they that concerned with you losing money? Or is it something else? Why so much effort to steer you away from XRP. Why never mention XLM alongside XRP? Once you start asking the questions, the answers reveal themselves. Boy, do I agree with that. And also this, you know, this has, we've, we've played the video of Joseph Lubin and his disguised whales many times, but the, for some reason, when you see the words right there in front of you beside him, it has an even, even more of an effect. So I thought I would read it to you while you look at him. And remember, the SEC tied Ripple up in court for four years with no accusations of fraud but left this Ethereum founder alone. Why? A person can buy, this is from Joseph Lubin about the Ethereum ICO. A person can buy from any number of different identities. We may limit the size to make it easier to disguise. If you're a whale, you can buy 50,000 units. So nobody scares people with an enormous initial purchase. You can do that through multiple identities. We won't require a real world identity. We can create pseudonymous email and identity to make an identity, make sure that everything works smoothly. Here's a good one for, from cowboy.crypto, who is the official cowboy of the Digital Asset Investor Channel. Remember this good cop versus bad cop clip from 2018 with Gensler and Hester Pierce? Um, he's, he's tweeting this because of this tweet from Eleanor Terrett yesterday. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce says she partly blames herself for how the commission was interrupted, has interpreted, <laughs> interrupted, has interpreted the Howey test when it comes to crypto. I blame myself in part for that, something I could have done differently. Well, you could have blown the whistle, um, which is why Cowboy Crypto and I both, looks like we both think she's been playing good cop to Gary's bad like cop. jurisdictions like the U.S., we find ourselves thinking about things like the Howey test and what is an investment contract because this new permissionless crowdfunding uh, sure feels like uh, a, a security. Um, how, what, what advice would you have for this audience and for the thousands of people who are, in some cases, feeling that they're waiting for the SEC to give more clarity in this, this world? Well, I think there is some clarity there already, right? If you're doing something that's basically saying, I'm trying to fund a project, i.e. a company, um, to build something, and I want you to give me money to do that, um, and I'm going to take the money and I'm going to build the project with the money you give and you're not going to have any role in that. You're just going to earn profits if I do a good job. That's a security. That looks very much like a traditional security. And so you should expect that that's going to implicate our rules. Uh okay, I wanted to show you something that just came across my phone. An interesting tweet. Look at this. Fill in the blank. By the end of year, XRP will be the one. That's one idea. Stuart Alderati, fun fact, in 1976, the SEC ruled that art galleries, even when promoting and selling to buyers that had investment motives, didn't need to register with the SEC. And he's retweeting the Open Sea Wells Notice news piece. All right. In DAI XRP, here's what we're going to talk about today. What is the big scandal? I mean, we've seen all kinds of stuff come out over the last few days. But what is the big scandal where they're busted dead to rights? What is the big bombshell scandal? Well, I'm going to show you what it is. And it's laid out perfectly. They're dead to rights here, folks. I mean, these people are dead to rights in, in a lot of areas, but this is one of them. Dead to rights. And, and with the information that is now out, it's one way or the other, folks. We either have a country or we, we either have a country where people go to prison that are in power when they when they 
don't uphold the Constitution, they blatantly break the law, it's criminal. Or we don't. We're going to find out, in my opinion, in the next, in this election cycle, in the next three or four months, we're going to find out if we have the rule of law anymore. We're going to find out if we have a country anymore. Because this can't stand what I'm about to show you. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family, if this is allowed to stand, we don't have a country anymore. In fact, I'll, I'll take it a step further. It might be time to go find you a hiding place. Because if the people that did this are not held accountable, what's their next step? What, it, 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 now that they know that they don't get held accountable even when they when there's obvious proof that they've broken the law and lied to Americans. So here we go.